I'm David Ainsworth, Head of Communications at the United Nations Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. We're here in Montreal and we have just finished the United Nations Biodiversity Conference, COP15. Over the last 14 days, the world has come to Montreal. 188 countries, 12,000 participants, hundreds of side events, and negotiations that totaled well over 300 hours. What did these result in? Well, we had an important Montreal moment, a moment for nature. Governments around the world agreed to the Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. This is a historic moment. The Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework is going to accomplish things that have never been done before for nature and biodiversity. The agreement has four goals, 23 targets, all moving towards a couple of common purposes. First of all, this framework is going to make sure that we protect 30% of the lands and waters and of the oceans of our planet. The agreement is going to mobilize $200 billion of finance every year for protecting nature and biodiversity. The agreement is going to deal with sustainable consumption and production, and it's also going to deal with new technologies, digital sequence information. The framework is adopted, but it's just a piece of paper. The world has a lot of work ahead of it so far. For example, for this question of protected areas, the world has to make sure that they've mobilized enough resources so we can protect this 30% in the areas where it matters most. And further, we have to make sure that we're taking into account the rights, the traditions, and the knowledge of Indigenous peoples and local communities, some of whom are the most important custodians of biodiversity on our planet. For finance, the world is going to need to mobilize this $200 billion a year. That's a lot of money that's going to need to come from a variety of sources at all levels. The Global Environment Facility will be creating a new Global Biodiversity Trust Fund. That fund will bring together public and private monies to help manage this transfer of resources uh, around the world. For sustainability, we need to work on production and consumption. Businesses are going to need to demonstrate that their production is biodiversity positive, and they're going to need to disclose their relationship and their impact on biodiversity. For consumers, they're going to need to consume sustainably, stop overconsumption, and change their behaviors so that we're living in harmony with nature. It's a lot of work, so we take this process forward to the next meeting, COP16 in Turkey, where we'll see the next chapter in this work of building a future of life in harmony with nature. I'm David Ainsworth. See you soon.